gentlemen, the founder and CEO of Rimac Automobili, Mr. Mate Rimac. Thank you. The world famous two cellos from Croatia. A big applause for them. Thank you guys for the great intro. We are really happy to see so many of you here today for the great news that we are going to share with you today. There are so many challenges that we are facing that it's difficult to look back at past achievements and reflect on what we have done. We are still a very young and very small company, but still we came quite far so far. This is our third consecutive year in Geneva. In 2016, we have here presented the production version of the Concept One, the world's first all-electric hypercar. Last year, we were here with two upgraded customer Concept Ones, and just a year later now, we are presenting the entirely new generation. The Geneva Motor Show has long been the world's most important stage for presenting automotive news. And today's, today we have seen a lot of interesting debuts. I'm really excited to see the rapid change and the big changes the industry is going through, an industry that was once known as slow, rigid, and not changing at all. We are very excited about the role that we are playing in this change. I can't describe to you how happy it makes me to know that our technologies are under the skin of many cars in this hall. These are exciting times for Rimac. As you know, we proud ourselves on designing, engineering, manufacturing and assembling our own components and cars in-house just outside of Zagreb in Croatia. What started as a one-man show in a garage is now a 350 people company growing rapidly and exponentially to face all the challenges associated with serial production of our components and our new car. The Concept One really left a mark in the world of supercars. It rightfully claimed the title of the world's first all-electric hypercar. It has shown what electric cars can do and what we as a company can do. It has delivered on the promise of showing what electric powertrains are all about and that it can be more exciting and competitive to combustion engine cars. Now, the time has come to present you the successor, the car that rounds up all the efforts that we have put in in the last years. This car is made entirely from scratch. Nothing is carried over from the Concept One. Nothing is off the shelf, which is very rare in this industry. Everything was specifically developed for this car. It combines performance, technology, usability, and style into a package with, which brings lots of character to the road. What you are about to see is the result of hard work of many smart and dedicated people. This is for them, for our team. So here it is, the Rimac C2. A big applause here for Adriano. He is with me from the very beginning, since 2010. He is the designer of the, two, of the Concept One, and now also the C2. So this is his, from his pen. Thank you, Adriano, and the whole team. I would like to introduce you just the most important features of the car and let you discover the many details later. So here are the four things that I would like to point out. The performance, the car's structure, the design, and the futuristic technology in it. So what has changed from the Concept One? Well, everything. The whole car has changed. The C2 has a full carbon fiber monocoque with a bonded carbon roof, an integrated structural battery pack, and the merged rear carbon fiber subframe. So it's a single monocoque with the rear subframe holding the rear powertrain and battery in place. We have aluminum front and rear crash structures and carbon fiber side crash structures. Um, so the all new powertrain is also uh, quite something new. You will be able to see it here behind me. So we have 2,300 newton meters of torque uh, being produced by four very powerful electric motors. So of course each motor is again controlling one wheel separately. Every vehicle dynamics engineer's dream come true and also my dream why this is the reason why I started a company. To use the advantages of electric powertrains uh, for a better sports car. So it has been designed to utilize everything electric motors can bring. The best of electric motors. And for that we need gearboxes. We have a pair of single speed gearboxes with a fixed ratio in the front and two speed double carbon clutch 
gearboxes in the rear. This allows the C2 to take full advantage of the torque and produce a mind-blowing acceleration at top speed, but I will come later to that. So the Riemann's all-wheel torque factoring is necessary here because we have to harness 1.4 megawatts or 1914 horsepower of power. So from the 1224 horsepower in the Concept 1, it's quite a big step, even more performance. So this system, the torque factory, replaces traditional electric stability control and traction control and enables an dynamic response, so from a full traction uh, behavior to a drift machine. Performance-wise, this car, you will judge that for yourself. It reaches a top speed of 412 km per hour or 258 miles per hour. So it makes full use of the instant torque, but also the traction made possible by a very precise traction control system and custom-made Pirelli tires for this car. So uh, we are reaching, besides the top speed, also amazing acceleration. We have uh, 1.85 seconds from 0 to 60 miles per hour with a one feet rollout. So the C2 can maintain that acceleration all the way up very high. So we reach 300 kilometers per hour in just 11.8 seconds. So if you have seen any uh, videos of the Concept 1 racing against other cars, it's not like some other electric cars that are very fast off the line but lose breath soon. Our cars are very fast no matter which speed. And the C2 is no different there. It will be even faster as the speed increases. A new high power battery with 120 kilowatt hour a very high capacity and high energy battery, but also combining energy and, um, and uh, performance and power, uh, high discharge rates was developed for this car, which enables an NEDC cycle at 650 kilometers of range, which is quite generous. The battery can be recharged with 250 kilowatts, which allows it to recharge from zero to 80% state of charge in just 30 minutes. New liquid cooling systems were also developed so that the car is not just a one-trick pony of a couple of accelerations, but it can actually perform over long term. So it's designed for two full laps on the Nürburgring without thermal degradation. So no thermal degradation on two laps. When it comes to the design, so the proportions are completely new compared to the Concept 1, but we can still see our design DNA. We continue to refine our DNA and the key features of us, of our cars. So what you can see here on the side is our signature tie and one of the most important attributes to the aerodynamic of the car because this is the air intake for the rear powertrain. So we have separate cooling systems for the front powertrain and the battery and separate cooling systems for the rear of the powertrain. So we have seven cooling systems separately in this car. And what this feature here represents is a tie. And the tie is an homage to our heritage, where we come from, for Croatia, because both the Thai and this car are both um, Croatian brainchilds, designed and made entirely in Croatia. So there are many active aerodynamic elements in this car. Um, so we have flaps in the front hood, which move depending on the battery temperatures and the mode of the car to enable either very good cooling of the battery or a low aerodynamic drag. The front splitter and underbody of the car has active elements, uh, as well as a fully operating um, active rear wing, which can act, which can continuously adjust itself, but also under heavy braking, um, raises up at, to be a full airbag brake and also stabilize the car at very high speeds. We have a fully flat floor with optimized uh, Venturi effect rear balances to accelerate the airflow underneath the car and to remove positive pressure under the car. So finally, we have also lightweight forged aluminum wheels that are designed um, to reduce wake on the side of the car and to extract hot air coming from the brakes. But of course, we have very high regenerative braking capability, so in normal operation, the, right, uh, the regenerative braking will take care of 90% uh, of, of the braking, except on the, on the uh, racetrack. Now, the butterfly doors of the car. So they are made in such a way that the passenger and driver can gracefully exit and enter the car. So it's not, um, it's not like other supercars where we have, um, just to help, I will help you here a little bit. <laughs> Wrong side, sorry. <laughs> So here we go. What we see here is a big entrance. 
So part of the roof is also removed together with the door. Um, it's a big entrance to get in the car and out of the car, um, so you can gracefully enter and exit. There is the sill is moving away together, so you can sit in the car and put your foot down it's for uh, a graceful enter into a hypercar, which is also quite rare. So the car is designed as a grand tour. So the cockpit is designed to be spacious. That was really important for us to have a usable and spacious cockpit. It has electrically adjustable seats and steering column. So we also have uh, three high definition screens, faster central screen and a passenger screen, uh, where the driver and the passenger can adjust to see as many or as little information as they want. So um, there is also a large trunk in the rear, uh, which is quite usable for a car like this. And it can be customized. So in this customization, we have the racing equipment with the um, helmets and, and some other stuff when you go to the racetrack. If I would spec the car, I would remove the trunk and then would have access to the beautiful power train underneath it. Again, showing that electric power trains are not just plastic boxes, but can be beautiful. And you can see, you can look at them here later, but then you, you lose the trunk. Uh, the car is alive with technology. So we have eight onboard cameras, we have a LiDAR, six radars, 12 ultrasonic sensors, as well as a GPS and IMU sensor for autonomous driving. The C2 is one of the most conscious and connected cars in the world. Just some numbers to, um, to point out how much this car generates. So uh, we, we are generating eight terabytes of data in our, every hour of driving. So for that, and for the 400 sensors we have in the car, we have 72 electronic control units that, are, that have the performance of 64 gigahertz, which is the equivalent of 22 MacBook Pros. So lots of processing power in this car. Uh, from the hardware le uh, perspective, this car is designed to be ready for level four autonomy. We are still not there, we are working on that, of course, but it has interesting features uh, like facial recognition uh, for unlocking the car and some other things that are here to enhance the driver's experience, not to take it away from him. So there is an interesting feature that we call the driver coach. So the driving coach enables the car to load several racetracks in real time and show the driver how to attack the, the track in the best, best way. So offering clear and, and visual and audible um, instructions on when to brake, when to enter a corner, and things like that. So it's like a near gaming experience, but in reality. So other ADAS features include automatic emergency braking, evasive control, blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assist, and adaptive uh, cruise control with uh, traffic pilot functionality. What comes next is an intensive final phase of development and testing. The requirements for homologation have become very strict and there are no exemptions for small volume manufacturers. So we have to go through the same process like big car manufacturers to get certified. Which means that we are doing hundreds of different tests, actually thousands, many of them are destructive. And we are going to crash many of these beautiful cars. But we have to live with that because we decided to do it properly. And this car, which is a big step for a small manufacturer, will be globally homologated, including US homologation. The C2 is going to be built in just 150 units. It's limited to 150. We are looking forward for all the customers that are going to join our family, and I'm really interested to see how they will spec their car. And this is a promise I will personally also test drive every single C2 to give it the final si sign off. I know it's a hard job, but somebody got to do it. So, to end on the same note as I began, I'm very proud of our team, both here and back home in Croatia, for all, for making it happen, for making all this come together. And I would like to thank everybody else in our wider circle, our customers, our strategic and technical partners, our network of dealers, and our shareholders. Except, expect great things from us. We are still a young company, still have a wide, long way to go, still lots of challenges in front of us, but we think we are on the right way and doing some very interesting things also that we can share with you in the near future. But now, enjoy the car, and thank you for your attention.